Oh, that actually feels quite large. G'day everybody and welcome to another Full Scale Fishing Adventures episode. We are on the outstanding, beautiful, stunning Murray River. It is just a picturesque day. I'm out chasing goldens. So I'm just going to put this on spot lock so that I don't drift away from where I want to be. If I can turn it on power on let's hit that on spot like that'll keep us in the one spot and then we'll get everything organized so i've got the these are really great containers these monocross containers really good latches and they're perfect size just to have a little yellow kit so these are the, this is the kit that i keep um, just ready for whenever i want to go up and have a session on the yellows so i've got some 20 pound platypus fluorocarbon I've got some Frogger Juniors, which are just an outstanding bait. Um, I've really come to love the Frogger Juniors. It's got a bit of a mixed bag in here, so I've got some of those Bagley Shads and also some switch blades for jigging as well. Some loose spinner baits like the uh, Tornado, which is just a slightly bigger presentation. And then I've got some small chatter baits as well. So starting out with that little half ounce Frogger Junior, I'm gonna do some timber, get a beautiful run of rock coming up. So I'm just gonna mix between the two, find out what the fish are sitting on, cause some days, you know, some days the rock will be really good. Other days the timber will be really good. Um, and you know, you might pick up a few on each depending on how good the fishing is. So start with the timber, we'll move to the rock and we'll see what happens. So to fish my spinner bait, as a general rule, I always like to get the bait to the bottom, but that does depend on the snag that I'm fishing or the area that I'm fishing, because if you've got a snag that's got lots of branches coming out, you may not be able to sink it right down. And with that extra cover, the fish might be sitting up too. So you don't actually need to sink it right to the bottom. If you've got a snag like this, which doesn't have much visual stuff up high, um, you can sink it all the way down to the bottom because you know it, this is actually quite an old decayed snag. I'll just run up over something there and you know the fish will be down deeper. Oh, we just had a hit. <laughs> just had a fair few casts in there and that one won't come back so I'm going to just head over, go on top of that bit where I can um, feel that hunk of timber down there and I'm going to drop the blade down and have a bit of a jig around see if he won't come and eat the blade jigging's great it's just such a great technique to have up your sleeve because obviously the fish are sitting on the timber um, and this just fishes it in the hot zone the whole time it's a really really effective technique which is just simply dropping it to the bottom. So you get to the bottom and then it's just lifts, feeling that blade vibrate. And as you get around the log itself, you can drop it down either side of it and just work that whole area. And you'll be amazed at how close you can actually get on top of the fish they really don't seem to mind the boat. And there we go. And that's exactly why having a blade rigged on a spinning rod will pay off because that fish ate 
ate the spinnerbait or like grabbed the spinnerbait but then didn't come back but got him on a blade there you go how cool is that get him in the net nice fish to start beautiful that is very cool so here we go first fish of the day beautiful fish tt switchblade and like i said went through that snag um, with the spinnerbait had a hit but it didn't come back put the blade out and uh he just walloped it so it's a beautiful clean fish he's over the legal size of 33 centimeters so this one is going to dinner with pop beautiful fish I say prefer to work up the river simply because even though there's only a very slight amount of current, you seem to hold in position better. And when you're fishing for yellows, you know, it's good to put a lot of casts into the snags. So by working upstream uh, will means that means that your boat just stays in the position you want it to for longer. going to add a bit of flavor to my jig this is the bloodworm scent which I think does make just a little bit of difference drop that down in that really gnarly looking snag here Absolutely nailed it. Nailed it. Check that one out. That was awesome. And again, I've cast a snag with a spinnerbait, but chucking the blade. Oh, and he got off. Anyway. <laughs> saw that big carp cruising and I thought it would be rude not to oh he's got me in a bit of strife here not to cast a lure at him <laughs> and he just absolutely walloped that which is pretty cool <laughs> it's actually on would you believe it a little mini plastic frog <laughs> it was cool I'm gonna get him away from all this weed and stuff <laughs> bit of fun pretty funny pretty funny carp on the plastic frog such strong fish got him got him it's on that z-man frog big fish Quick interlude between snags, carp on the little Z-Man frog. That was cool. <laughs> All right, <laughs> get back to chucking at yellows now. Okay, crunched, absolutely crunched the spinnerbait. And that was cool, I actually worked from the butt of the snag there, um, casting out along it because this snag's slightly deeper. Oh, and that came off too. <laughs> Damn. Got him that time. <laughs> well, actually a different one off the same snag. 
See if I can't get this one in the net. Beautifully dark fish. Get him in the net. In you come, buddy. Beautiful fish. Oh, got him that time. That is a cracking, cracking golden. Look at the size of him. Look how well he ate that. Frogger Junior, it is right down his gob. Cracking fish, very stoked. Just goes to show you that they sit, on, there's multiples that'll sit on the snag. Um, and even though you've just caught one, uh, which I did drop, uh, you can go back on the same snag and get another opportunity. Very happy with that one. Beautiful fish, nice dark colored fish that one. Oh, that actually feels quite large. <laughs> nice fish. I was only just thinking to myself how cool it is with a blade that you can really probe in amongst all the bits because I could feel it sort of ticking on top of the snag and then you drop it down to the next bit and that is just a stunning yellow. That is awesome. Beautiful condition fish. Oh. Cracker. Well, how good is a blade? Really, they are awesome. And this is what it's all about, really. This is just a beautiful, beautiful yellow on the switch blade. Man, did that absolutely annihilate that. <laughs> Man, did he just smash that. Oh, nice fish. Where's the net? <laughs> Beautiful conditioned fish. Yeah, yeah. That is just a total spot-free, beautiful yellow. Have a look at him. Just a beautiful, beautiful yellow. That is awesome. Number four on the spinnerbait. Such a good bite. It just absolutely nailed it in that typical spot right out the front of the tips of the snag. And red and black, once you go red and black, especially that TT Junior, TT Frogger Junior, I've caught so many yellows on that bait. Oh, I've hooked a big cod. Snapped it off. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> well, serves me right for fishing light line. And that big cod just stole my, uh, stole my spinnerbait. Hmm. There you go. Well, that is me done. Had a very awesome time. Caught some really nice yellows, hooked a big cod, got a carp. It sort of had it all that session. The top two baits, definitely that TT switchblade. So good for jigging. And also those Frogger Juniors are just outstanding spinner baits. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it. Leave a comment. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because it helps it grow a lot. I've had a very awesome time on the Murray again. If you have never visited the Murray before, make sure you come and drop by sometime. I'll catch you next time.